In today's video, we are going to paint a little ladybug crawling up some mushrooms. You can see I've got a page of drawings here, and my hope is to share one of these uh, with you each week in October. We'll see how the filming schedule goes. Um, but I am going to just cover up the toadstool and the snail for now so I don't smudge it with my left hand. So that's protected. And then I have a bat and a little mouse with acorns here too, which I'm excited to paint. Uh, I am going to start on this one. So without further ado, let's get some colors mixed up. Okay, so I have my paint palette here. I've cleaned out my wells of paint. I like to mix up all my paint before I start my painting and sip on my tea. So I'm going to start with the reds for the ladybug. There's some reflection showing um, in the reference photo and there are quite a few darker and then some lighter tones of red. So I am going to start with some alizarin crimson. Which is a beautiful deep crimson color. Then I will grab some Windsor Red. This is sort of a mid-red tone. And then a warmer red, which is Scarlet Lake. And I am just using a very cheap dollar store brush to mix my colors. Sometimes while I'm painting, I'll use my good brush, but initially and for the most part, I try and scrub in really hard to get nice uh, concentrated colors, which is why I just use an inexpensive brush. And I'm going to also mix some um, alizarin crimson, probably with some purple because there's some shadowy red on this ladybug as well, looking at the reference photo. And I am going to try a new color today. I'm very excited. This is a Daniel Smith color I picked up today at my local art store, which if you're in Nanaimo, it's Iron Oxide um, Art Supplies. It's such an amazing art store. And they have all the Daniel Smith colors, and this is called Lunar Violet. I just love it, as I love the name too. And it's a like very shadowy, blackish violet color. And I think it'll be great for using on the ladybug for some shadow. The next colors I'm going to mix up are the black colors for the ladybug. And I will grab some black, which I also bought today. I don't usually ever use real black, but again, I tried out all the Daniel Smith colors and I really liked lunar black. This is another lunar color. These ones both granulate a lot, so I thought it'd be good for interest for animals. They're also transparent, whereas most blacks are not. They're pretty opaque, which is why a lot of watercolor artists don't use them. You can see this granulating already. And then my normal way of making black is mixing Payne's Gray, the Windsor and Newton. Oh, actually that's indigo. Anyway, that'll do, we'll add indigo as well. Um, this is the Windsor Newton Payne's Gray. Still bluish, but a gray in there, in there. Now I've got this very strong indigo by accident, but we'll go with it. And then I'm going to mix in some Van Dyke Brown. This is a new color. I went on a little bit of a bender at the art store today. Um, this is a Holbein brand. Uh, it just looked nice and it was quite reasonably priced. This was only $14 for a really big tube, and I know Holbein is a nice, good brand of art, um, artist color, artist quality watercolors. Um, I have two other Holbein colors, um, an orange and then a bright violet. Sometimes they just have a little bit of something that um, Daniel Smith or Windsor and Newton do not offer. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of burnt sienna to that, warm up that brown or black, and a bit more Payne's Gray. And you can see it kind of gives you a blackish color. Just add a little bit of the violet there. So that's looking pretty black. Let's rinse that out. 
And now I'm going to switch to a clean jar of water to mix up these really delicate colors on the mushroom. First of all, looks like there's a little bit of a reddish brown, so I'll go with some burnt sienna and maybe some transparent red oxide as well. That's Daniel Smith. And then I'm going to make a nice light kind of botanical gray color. If you hear birds in the background, that is because I have the cat TV on for my cats because they like to harass me while I'm painting, so they're occupied with their cat show. So, ultramarine, and then light red. We'll give you a nice gray color bit more blue, cool it down, and then we'll just want to dilute that beautiful color. I can almost see some little tinges of bluish and also violet in there, so I'm just going to take some cobalt violet, this is a very subtle color, and mix that part, part way with that. And then there's so warm, sort of violety color, and almost like a beige yellow color, probably raw sienna would do. And that's probably good for getting started for mixing colors. All right, I'm going to start with the mushroom cap and get that wet with a wet and wet wash. I've lightened my pencil with my kneaded eraser. And there's kind of some scalloped marks on the cap. So it's not just a smooth top. Just lightly tapping that violet color in. And I think I'll switch to my smaller brush, double zero. Now while it's still wet, I'm just defining the bottom edge. And do the top as well. It's a little bit darker than I want, so I'm just going to drag what I have around on the paper. And then sort of indicate those little lines. And I think I'll lift a little color out. Dabbing that with a thirsty brush technique. Okay, I will leave that part to dry. And now do the stem.
Next I will start on the other mushroom. Just a tiny bit of color. I just wet it and then I let it sort of spread out into the stem on its own. tiny ones. Now this mushroom cap, again quite small. It's always fun doing the wet and wet, but also sometimes challenging because you erase your pencil enough, then you're sort of painting what you can't quite see sometimes at the beginning, which is why it's good to have your reference photo and drawing handy. Adding some of that gray violet to this side. This one has just a tiny little splotch of brown. Looks like that dried out too quickly. I'll re-wet this because I want it to be a blended look like the photo. And then the little cap, I didn't draw all the mushrooms in, just one. It's actually the brownish color. Now I will just lightly draw in the back of the cap on that one just a little line to indicate it right now. It's lighter on the back side. And then I'll wet a little bit of this and do the same thing. Make sure your paint's also still wet enough. And with a clean damp brush, just soften that a little bit, blend it. That's starting to come to life. And you can actually see the back of the cap on this one as well. Now I think I will get that part painted in just going to do a bit of a variegated wash, nothing too photorealistic. 
Switching to my larger brush, which is a number two. We will do another wet on wet wash, just getting a smooth coat of clean water. And I will grab Burnt Sienna, Red Oxide, and then I want a bit of a darker brown in here too. Maybe even just a little bit of that black. And then just quickly grab a bit of Van Dyke brown. Dab my brush and add that in and just kind of make some texture lines make sure my water is still nice and wet here so that it just fades out Just experiment and drop a little lunar violet in because that will be granulating. Rinsing my brush, making sure it's nice and clean, and again just rubbing and dabbing. And there is some lighter sort of highlight up here. So I will just grab a bit of that and then Lunar Violet. Spread my brush out and this brush a bit of that like that to blend it. And we'll leave that at that and I'll just dry this with a hair dryer so that I do not smudge it with my hand. Okay, now before I move along, I am going to just use a flat head brush here and just scrub at my mushroom cap, the larger one, to lift up some of that color because in the photo it's quite a lot, a sort of glowing here even. Try and keep that illuminated effect. Same with this one. Okay, now we'll move on to the main event, the ladybug. Because the spots are so dark, I'm just going to paint over the red, but I will try and leave the highlights. Um, there's some glossy highlights on this little ladybug. So first I'll do the wet and wet on the red area. And I will try not to put paint in to the areas where there's quite prominent highlights. I'm going to move uh, light to dark and wake my paint up looking at the lightest areas and now that I've wet it I think I will actually switch to my smaller double zero brush and first adding in those lighter colors of earth tones of red and I'm just almost outlining around while it's nice and wet. 
where those highlights are. back to the bigger brush. I'm just going to sort of blend that about. This highlight has stayed nice. This one a bit lost. So I will lift that out and dab with my paper towel. Cleaning up this edge. And I'm going to let that dry and then do the next layer. Taking some of my purple crimson color, painting it wet on dry now. Number two brush. Blend that larger bit. Now I'm switching to my spotting brush. And just going to work on that edge of the highlight, get a better blended transition. My brush is clean and damp when I work right into the highlight. And actually, it's going to lift a bit of color here. And along the edges where there's some reflected light. And might even be a little bit right here. And 
looking more shadowy down this corner. That I will let dry now. Now I am going to take my same little spotting brush and put in some of the black. Not as worried about lifting the pencil since it's such a dark color. This lunar black that I just got I can see is very granulating. Might be better for fur but I'll just add a little in on the lighter sides. I'll switch to my homemade black blend. And there's quite a few little highlights, so I'm actually going to go down to the double zero. Just move whatever paint I have on the paper already around. Just sort of drawing in the center line, I think you can kind of see it on there. Dabbing in some lighter and darker areas, even though it's all black. Finding those edges, I'll leave that like that for now, and then dabbing excess off. There's a little sort of nub where the antennae start. They're not perfectly straight, so I'll just make sure I wiggle my brush. Right upright, and very light pressure. And then a little dot on the end. Hard to paint this tiny. Now we are seeing the ladybug come together. I'm going to take my alizarin crimson, go back to the shell the back and just whoops way too oh my goodness watercolor SOS that happened nothing to be done about it I'm not gonna muck that about at all it'll just wreck that wash just let it dry nothing wrong with a little bit of red undertone and this is what I meant to do just draw that now I will dry this. Now this is dry. I am going to take a very thin wash of the Scarlet Lake and just dab it and lightly wash it in on those areas where there's reflected light, where it is a warmer, lighter red.
just about working in the layers with watercolor. Take my darker purple red again and just hit those areas where it's quite dark and blend it out with a clean damp brush. Rinse and dab again. That's the last one I will do before I dry this again. This reminds me of painting a rose hip same types of shapes and reflections and colors and maybe just a little bit more scarlet right up the top so i'm pretty happy with the black that didn't take too much building up on the ladybug just going to do a little bit more on the red portion before i add the black dots that's just wet on dry using the number two brush to blend these areas. This is sometimes a harder technique for some people. Um, so it's really good just to practice blending and layering. It's really what it's all about. more scarlet mix with a bit of the regular Windsor red sort of a mid red just up at the top you could go really detailed with this and follow the reflections exactly I'm just sort of indicating them Alright, I'm going to dry that and then add on the black spots. Okay, ready for the black spots. I am actually going to just take my pencil and lightly draw them in again. Since you can't really see with all the layers of paint. Some of them are a little bit fluffy on the edges too. So I'm going to paint wet on dry and then I might sort of blend out a few of the edges for that soft look. I'm going to go ahead with my homemade black mix. And this is my little spotting brush. That one kind of goes into the highlight, so I'm going to rinse the brush and just sort of drag out the black a little bit so it's not quite as dark. They're not perfectly regular ovals or circles too, so that's something to note. A little light bit there, light bit there. They're not all right centered. Some of them are going off the back. Now rinsing and drying my brush. They're again not perfectly black either, so I'm going to lift out little spots, blend some.
back to my double zero, grabbing some more alizarin crimson and just refining that line a little bit. See about maybe darkening around parts of the spots as well. Now I will just touch up a few of the darker areas. And I guess this is the head, so define that more. Grab a bit more of the crimson violet color here, just to put down at this bottom dark spot. Okay, I'm going to leave the ladybug at that and finish the rest of the mushrooms. All right, I'm going to continue with the mushrooms. I have my double zero brush and I'm gonna wake up the bluer part of this gray mix. And I'm just going to sort of map in a little bit of solid portion there. And actually it's a little bit more yellow with uh, that raw sienna. Just wet on dry, such tiny areas. Now I can see a little bit of the ribs or texture on the cap on the back. Draw those in. I'm going to leave that just white as is because it's quite illuminated. Now I am going to just draw these ribs or markings in as well on the top. Take this nice purpley gray and and see actually just while I'm doing that that the stem kind of ends here not going up through this solid area so I'm just going to take my chisel brush and blend that out it's the nice thing about subtle colors it's easy to blend off a mistake and now darkening the top of the stem where it joins. I'm just blending. Same for the portion here. Kind of down behind the ladybug and tenai. And now this part is going to turn into brown, but I'm just going to bring that gray down a bit. Now I will wet this, this portion, and get my red oxide and just sort of dab a little in because I want a nice soft edge. And 
just sort of coax it out to the edge. Just making shadows on the stem. Now I will draw in those little marks on the smaller mushroom. Kind of blend out one of the edges. Might do that on this one now too. So just make the line a little thicker, rinse your brush, blend it. and then tiny little ribs on this guy down here. Define the edges a bit more and the stem. in the red oxide on the stem. Just going to dry brush a little bit more onto this little one. And dry brush a little bit onto part of the one there. I will get some very dilute cobalt violet. Take my number two brush, dilute it even more, very dilute mix, and paint that over just the bottom portion here. Same with this one. Even if something looks gray or white, it's always fun to kind of add a bit more very subtle color to it for interest. 
Now, again with the chisel brush, turning my paper a bit, as you can see, really lighten part of that top cap. I'll re-wet the branch or stem or little woody root and again I can see some violet sort of shadowy reflected light so again more cobalt violet and I'm just going to brush that in Dab it in. And also a little bit more shadow. I will take some of our homemade black, mix it with lunar violet, and just sort of paint it along the bottom, leaving a little bit of reflected light talked about a bunch in this video. I'm trying to be more conscious of it because it's easier. Well, it's not easy, but it's a, a way to make your painting look a lot more 3D to allow for those little light areas. And sometimes I don't follow a reference photo a lot and then I don't have that. So they just look a little bit more illustrated rather than realistic. more red oxide just at the base here where the mushrooms are coming out And then dab in some more cobalt violet into that. 